So this method of recruiting Minthara in Act 2 while keeping the Tieflings alive and allowing you to also recruit Halson was discovered by Pao, P-A-O, uh, and then translated by a Reddit user, Zookeeper Game Deep 360 has a number of advantages. It's a finicky process, but it allows you to play the game completely normally up until the Goblin Camp, and then completely normally again all the way up until Moonrise Towers. And really, the Goblin Camp is not a hard process to execute. It's the Moonrise section that uh, tends to give the most trouble. First step of this process is probably one that you've tried before, that is to deal non-lethal damage using the non-lethal passive to knock Minthara out. Uh, you do this before fighting Drorraz Ragslin. Um, once she's down and out like this, so you can loot her. I usually leave her closed because otherwise she ends up naked in the throne room, but you do you. After this, uh, if you want to kill Dro Ragslin, you want to do it before you do a long rest. Uh, once a long rest has been performed, she will be back up and active, and I believe it may trigger her to be hostile. After you've killed Dro Ragdalen, do a long rest. Verify that she is up and moving about. And you can see here, she's so active that she's willing to accuse us of theft. Fortunately, I think we can talk our way out of it. After all, we are such good friends. Next, you can play the game however you like up until the start of Act 2. That is either entering the Mountain Pass or entering the Shadowlands from the Underdark. I believe the game can be played normally all the way up until you reach Moonrise Towers. So I believe you can go through, you can do Shadow Hearts Companion Quest. Uh, you can do, I would actually recommend doing the Harper Quest, where you rescue the Harpers from the Shadows if you want to do that because I believe passing through the Shadowlands will automatically trigger that. So the only caveat is you will need to be at least level 7 so that you have one person in your party that can cast Polymorph and one person in your party that can cast Dominate Beast. You're going to need to have a Potion of Invisibility or another way of getting invisibility on yourself, and you're going to need to have at least one character that has 18 Strength or a Hill Giant Potion. Once you're ready to recruit Minthara, you're going to want to make your way through the Shadowlands and get the Moonrise Tower's waypoint. So there we go. We can exit turn-based mode, and we are safe. Hop over, have a conversation with the guard. Now, normally I would run through the cells, but here, to avoid triggering any interior cutscenes, I use a potion of fly. And then I use the overhead mode, pressing O to fly up above into the second level terrace. And I can walk past all of the guards and get the Moonrise Towers waypoint. So like I said, whole point of this is to get the Moonrise Towers waypoint. Uh, once you've gotten this and you're level seven, uh, the heist begins. So we got the waypoint. We're going to flip back to the goblin camp. Fast travel. Head over back to where Minthara is located. You can see her there. We're going to need two spells. Polymorph. And Dominate Beast. Uh, Dominate Beast has an extremely low chance of hitting. Because she's a drow and because she's a paladin. Uh, I get first try in this run. Uh, I That never happens. It usually requires several quick save, quick load to uh, make that happen. Next, you're going to want to select the sheep and have the sheep fast travel to the Moonrise Tower's waypoint. To do this, you're going to need to exit turn-based mode, hit M, hit the fast travel waypoint, and once you pop up, you want to hold down shift and keep pressing the space bar so that you re-enter turn-based ASAP. The reason being is you need at least four turns of polymorph remaining on the sheep in order to make it into the throne room with Minthara before she breaks polymorph. Here, I've got scrolls of Dimension Door that I've kind of saved up through the playthrough. That will allow me to quickly traverse to the throne room 
with Minthara. I believe it can be done by just carrying her there using improvised weapon, which you'll see at the end of this process uh, in this run. But Dimension Door gets you a lot more movement. Also, highly recommend using Long Strider on whoever's doing the carrying. Uh, I didn't do that here until my second turn for some reason. So here we go. First Dimension Door, click, pop in and turn for everybody. And really you should be moving your entire team behind whoever's doing the carry. Uh, of note, the other items that you're going to need for this, you're gonna need a character with uh, 18 strength that will do the carrying of Minthara. And you will also need a potion, scroll, or spell of invisibility available to you uh, to complete the last step of this process. So here I'm sprinting people behind because I realized I probably should have somebody open the door for Carlac. So we're gonna move the rest of our team into position. Dimension door ourselves right up to the door. Open the door. And turn on everybody. And honestly, I'd be quick saving pretty much every turn throughout this process, just in case something wonky goes on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, each step of this is a bit finicky. So the more chances you give yourself, the better. See here, I finally get long strider on Carlac, like I should have done from the beginning. Another dimension door. And this is the probably the most finicky step. So make sure you quick save. And what you're going to do is you're going to have your chauffeur, whoever's going to be lifting Minthara, use Minthara as an improvised weapon. You're going to select an area further along the path that you're trying to take her. And then before you reach the end of that pathing, you need to right click to stop the character from slamming Minthara down and harming her. So, oh, I forgot to catch. <laughs> Shark's lagging behind as usual. Um, so we'll just move her along as well. Karlak is going to pick up Minthara here as an improvised weapon and pretend like she is going to slam her down right in front of the door. Just like you would do with a goblin, right? Right there. Right click to set her down and you'll notice she's moved, but she hasn't taken damage. We're gonna do this again. And the place that you're aiming for is see those two pews kind of at an angle. You wanna get Minthara kind of right into the apex of where those two pews would be if they formed a V. So you can see here I'm doing it in several stages because the placement is extremely finicky. And there we go, we triggered the cutscene. Uh, the sheep will General. be judged. Now, while the cutscene is going on, I'm gonna hit the character button in the lower left portion of the screen and select the characters that are not in the cutscene. We can exit turn-based mode at this point and we want to regroup and move our entire party down into the cells. And we wanna get one character, the character with invisibility, into the interrogation room where Minthara will end up. The cutscene's still going on with Karlak and Minthara in it at this point. So we are just moving the rest of our party. Uh, you can see they try to go through the throne room here. Not a great choice. Nope, 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 nope. We are going around, not getting caught in the cutscene. Down the stairs and into the interrogation room. Now we're going to ungroup. We're going to move one character into the interrogation room. 
set him up right next to where Minthar will end up, which is kind of over on the left here, and then we're going to enter turn-based mode. Next, we switch back over to the character that was in the cutscene, Karlak in this case. We go through the cutscene. I always choose to try to mentally influence Zrel. We get on the first try. Karlak's very persuasive. What can I say? So, once Minthara's been judged and removed, you want to switch back to the character that is in turn-based. You can see her here. She's been placed in the cell with us. You need to initiate combat and do a trivial amount of damage to make her hostile. Here I use a single magic missile. You need to talk your way out of the assault charge. I use Charm Person here, and then the game takes it away from me. Not sure what that's about. I uh, got scammed. So I burned some inspiration points. Uh, third time's a charm. And we managed to succeed. Once you exit this, Minthara's still pissed at you. So you'll be in combat with Minthara with that character. This is where invisibility comes in. I'm using the invisibility potion option here. Now I'm invisible. I'm going to run out of the cell. <laughs> realize that I ran a bit too far and I can't actually close the door behind me, so I'm going to sneak a star in over uh, to close the door behind me. Once the door is closed, I end turn. This will cause Minthara to search around for us. Uh, she casts a couple of buffs here. Who cares? Uh, don't react so we don't re-enter combat. Once this has happened and she exits combat because she can't find us, we need to run a character back in to talk with the guard. And we click on her here. And now you're back in the game. The game proceeds as normal as if uh, Minthar had been left alive in the goblin camp. Uh, and you can recruit her as normal using the wisdom saving throws necessary or simply kill everybody else in the room. Uh, so that's it. That's the heist. It's a bit involved, but the nice thing is uh, the crux of the gameplay that you have to do where it's kind of janky like this is fairly short in duration. And around that, you can play the game as normal. 